at reactor one, those that system was told to shut off outside the control of the operators, and the operators couldn't get it to turn back on 11 minutes after the generators cut off. With uh, with reactor with reactor two, those systems shut down three hours after after um, after the electricity was lost. And at reactor three, those systems shut down on day two. They shouldn't ever shut down because the only you know how it semi functions. Um, it has air pressure, and as long as it has air pressure, the brakes are off. Right. When you release it, when you release air pressure on a semi, when your brakes are failed, um, that means that they're on. If you have a brake problem with a semi, those brakes are on. With a brake problem with a the car, they're off. But with a brake problem with a semi, that truck is so dangerous that its default mode is the brakes have to be told to shut off. This emergency backup system at Fukushima actually needs a powered command to keep it from activating. And the fact that it did activate means that in that facility, something still had power and fed those valves the signal they needed to shut off. Well, Magna BSP bragged to the Jerusalem Post uh, after Reactor 3 had exploded that they maintained a full-time data connection to their cameras all the way through in that reactor. And that's 24, uh, number 24 for those listening. Yes. they, right. they I, I, that, that page is my, my Internet's down right now. It's a long story. But I've been having lots of problems since I typed this article. And this, I, it's a long story. I don't want to get into that. Yeah, okay. Um, with, uh, so I, I just got to kind of wing it now. But uh, the only way that, okay, so, here we have power dead at this facility. Batteries die in eight hours, and, and oh, there's, there's so many things. They actually brought in generators from off-site before the batteries, the backup batteries, to turn the cooling pumps died. They have backup batteries there. They actually brought in off-site power, and they had sufficient power available there within eight hours of that. And the roads were in perfect shape because there was no earthquake. They managed to drive these huge generators in, and when they tried to hook them up, the switch gear would not let them um, turn on the power to the facility. Well, all these all these systems are linked in to uh, to the SCADA system that can be infected by Stuxnet. So here's a system telling them that they can't activate this power that they brought in. You can't get the switches to work. The only way that that can happen is is is, is the controller telling it not to activate. Um, there are so many aspects of this story. So we have the regular, uh, the standard uh, uh, steam-powered backups not working. We have the electrical backups not working. And the generators, one of those generators actually kept running, and one was enough to keep that facility safe. It kept running even despite the other ones cutting off, which never got flooded, but because they're in the turbine rooms. That's another story. You have to read the article uh, at Fukushima, at Jimstone Freelance, at Fukushima, or forward slash Fukushima.html. You have to read that article to, to get all this. Um, but here we have a, a facility where power has been brought in. They can't hook it up. They've got a generator working. The switch gear is telling it and you can't use it. They've got emergency backup systems that are functioning, and they shut off all, all by themselves. Well, with a data link leaving, and, and so here is a scenario that, that I think really happened at Fukushima. And I, I'm just going to read this because I've got it really well written. Um, I'm going to read it straight off the site. Okay. Um, you got, I've got the uh, backup here running. I honestly believe that Japan is being held a nuclear hostage. It all makes sense. Number one, the Japan offers to enrich uranium for Israel's great Satan, Iran. Number two, immediately Israel sets up front companies masquerading as security companies, and one of them succeeds in getting a security contract at a Japanese nuclear Four months later, the Demona Dozen shows up, and under the Cutterty contract, it's unlimited access to the heart of Fukushima. They plant the virus, install real cameras outside the facility, and functional, poorly disguised new cameras inside the facility. In addition to this, they install unauthorized data connection to allow control of all the guts of the facility via the virus. And they admitted this to, an, uh, to this connection in an article in the, in the Jerusalem Post 
Um, after installing Stuxnet and the nuke space scram, Israel waits for one of the many natural quakes, as is how they wrote, I wrote the article. I, tell, I only came up with this information about, about the possibility of creating earthquakes this morning. The tsunami comes in, uh, swamps Stuxnet. Okay, Israel waits for one of the many natural quakes in Japan to provide cover for the tsunami bomb, and they already have the nuke at the bottom of the Japan Trench. VLF kitchens are established for the bomb to penetrate the water. David and Demona get seismic readings from Japan. 6.67 in progress. Boom. Tsunami comes in and swaps the Stuxnet detected power plant and direct video feed from legitimate cameras they installed gets back to David and Demona via a totally unauthorized channel and David knows just when to cut the generators off. Others on the team do all they can to counteract emergency measures taken by the employees at Fukushima who are unaware an attack is taking place and do not understand why everything is going crazy. Israeli Prime Minister calls Japan and says, take that for offering to help Iran. And you know, there are five more nukes in the ocean off the coast of Japan, and we are going to set those off and destroy your coastal cities if you not for, do not forget all about that 6.67 and say it was a nine to cover for tsunami effects. And now we are going to make your people demand you move away from nuclear power so you can never threaten us like that again. We are going to blow up Fukushima, and you're just going to go along with whatever story we tell you. So David and his pal... ...the full throttle to melt them down while the virus keeps control room reading false... ...the place is coming apart. After enough mayhem and suits to revive, they set off the plastic nukes and high. And that is how Reactor 4 is building stuff. That's how you get a reactor. You cannot do anything to explode. And even though I didn't get every single detail, you know, I think I've got enough because the side it proves beyond a doubt that the quake was not what we were told and was in fact an inland 6.8. And which was calculated by that higher than the 6.67 that, you know, that we talked about because the, 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 the seismic station is never going to be right at the epicenter, so they triangulated it to a 6.8. Um, numerous reference sources prove that Stuxnet really was written by Israel, and Japan really did offer to enrich uranium for Iran, and Israel has been documented to have already destroyed one nuclear program in Iran and probably did. Uh, and Japan contributing to Iran's nuclear future would have made them just as much an enemy to Israel as Iran. Israel would want them taken out. It is documented that a team from Israel with history only consisting of working in Israeli defense got unlimited access to a Japanese nuclear facility, which then exploded. Reactor 4 had been defueled and proven disassembled, and therefore no explosion was there was possible. What should have happened at Reactor 4, if anything at all? The fuel pool should have melted down and caught fire once the water boiled off from a lack of recirculation at worst and badly contaminated the, the, the containment structure. Nothing else. And, you know, and, the, and, and that's the thing is the inside containment walls are like over 8 feet, eight feet thick, probably 12 feet thick. I never could get the specification for that. But they blew so badly that Reactor 4 is in danger of falling over, and I'd like to know how that happened. Are you still there? Yeah, oh yeah, I'm here. Okay, okay. I'm just letting and, you and know, then, uh, so we get this okay. all in. I want to get this and all then, in. And uh, then the Japanese government is going along with the story of a scientifically proven false 9.0 earthquake. You can see the pictures. You can see the seismograms. Nothing happened there other than a tsunami. There is no, there is a reason why they're going along with this story, and my guess is that Israel has made threats to wipe out Japan's coastal cities with additional tsunamis. If the government of Japan speaks a word of what went on, there should be no reason for Japan to go along with this, this crazy story other than a continued threat. Is it not interesting that this quake happened, you know, at the bottom of the Japan Trench? I only found out that it really, they, they, they were saying that it happened at the bottom of the Japan Trench, but when you map out um, what, what, uh, where, where this nuke actually went off by, by, by their star in the ocean. It's not in the Japan Trench. It's about 20 miles inland, you know, closer to the land from the Japan Trench. Um, now, here we get the kicker. The Department of Homeland Security um, canceled a meeting about Stuxnet at Cape Downcon 
Um, Cape Town Con is, is a conference where it's an industrial conference where uh, where industrial facility operators get to know or, or learn about how to secure their facilities. Department of Homeland Security has ha, um, advised the cancellation of all discussion of Stuxnet. And my belief for the reason for that is because they want to keep the threat alive. They want this thing out there so our reactors are vulnerable to it, so they can get their disasters here. And and I guess, you know, we're getting kind of close to the end of the program, so I'm, I'm, I'm just going to let people go at that. Consider that. We need such a massive awareness on this subject just to prevent a disaster in this country because they're not picking favorites. They want dominance. They want control, and it doesn't matter who they hurt or what they do to get it. America is a little bit too much of a rebel for them. They're pretty upset with this country. It didn't just fall over like Europe did. Uh, we are the last stand, and, and they, I, I really believe they have a plan for us that isn't pretty at all. And so basically that's, uh, that's my word, that's what I had to say. Now you say they. Um... Oh, the elite. The elite. You know, I want to I want to uh, 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 not allude to Zionists and 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 uh, and uh, and you know what that means. I want to I want to keep away from that as much as possible, even though that is what we're talking about. You know, um, it, but is, it might you know, it might, you know I I picture uh, we'll we'll say the Zionists being a more of the military arm of this group that run, you know, want, want Oh, no, 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 no. I've been inside that community for two years. It's every last one of them. You'll get your occasional good one, like Mike Rivero, or or, uh, or your occasional good one, like, uh, like uh, uh, who's is, who is the guy that just died of cancer? Um, <laughs> oh, gosh, I can't believe it. Aaron Russo. Yeah. Aaron Russo was a good one. Not all of these people are off the edge, but I'll tell you right now, about 95% of them are. They are on the same sheet of paper. And it doesn't matter if they're orthodox or reform or conservative or anything else there, or, or Sephardic. They're all on the same sheet of paper. I sat on their meetings and, and, and heard them brag about, about uh, having control of the government and, and the medical system, the educational system, and the media and the communications and everything else. They have us in the bag. They've got it. They know it. And, and uh, you know, what can I say? Uh, I, I like using and, and the uh, term because he... For me, it's not about an ethnicity, or it's not. It's about it's a state government. All governments are evil. Yeah. Well, it's it's, it's yeah. What we've got here is 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 a is a group that wants world dominance at any cost. Right. Right. And this. And, and, and it is and it is political because you know when you when face to face they're really nice and among their own group they're really they're decent people like anyone else. But you know every group tends to have its tendency towards dominating everything, and and they've had a lot of success. Yeah, well, uh, well, uh, we're, we're at the end, and so uh, you're going to keep up this page with some references on your page, so people who listen to the show can go to the website, jimstonefreelance.com, and there'll be some link to take you through, so people can follow the bouncing balls. You may update it as time goes, but this way they can yeah, at least it. you can follow it, and it will uh -huh. be rebroadcast, like I mentioned, and uh, the archives will go up. And uh, you know, thousands more will be of this, and uh, they can get a hold of you through your website at jimstonefreelance.com. While you and your website still exist, that is. Uh, are, yeah. are, are you, are you, I've had some trouble. Yeah. So I, I, uh, <laughs> I, I, you gave me a list of things to do. So I started to call people and let them know that I wasn't planning suicide. I don't have cancer, and uh, and whatnot, because uh, uh, this should be known prior to anything happening so uh, i'm yeah. uh, i'm hoping it doesn't come to that but uh, i i'm I, i'm glad you uh, you did the show it uh, you have some very good data that has to take be answered if someone's going to say no so but we will talk again uh, uh maybe we could uh, continue on another show but jim stone thank you for your time and your effort yeah.